Are you ready for some HOA justice with an update at the end? Also, I have a podcast with more stories like this. Click the link in the description or the pinned comment. This one's called Fool Me Once, Shame on You. Fool Me Twice, I'll Bury You, posted by Welcome to My Mind. This is primarily sweet, sweet revenge, but it was achieved by maliciously complying. Background. I work for a very large roofing company, and in this particular region, there are only three companies that are considered when it comes to larger commercial projects. So that's like apartment complexes, condos, and so on. And my company is one of them. We all had worked the region as friendly competitors so much, so that up to this point, if one of us landed a large deal but didn't have the time to complete it, we would hand it off to one of the other two in good faith. We'd be paid a finder's fee based off of the cost of the total job, and the cycle would continue. That is, until the following incident went down. Two years ago, I got a contract for a commercial metal building, but did not have the crews to spare for this project. So I called the owner of one of the other two companies, let's call him Mr. D for D-Bag, that I previously mentioned could handle this, and I referred him the deal, which he graciously accepted. My finder's fee here would have been about 40 grand, a pretty hefty chunk of change, but he probably made five times that in profit. He never paid me this. I tried calling him dozens of times to get paid, but he was now dodging me. Eventually, my number and email were blocked from calling his phone, office, and both work and personal emails. Okay, if that's how you want to be, two can play at this game. Fast forward a couple months, and there was a massive storm that damaged a huge condo complex. I'm talking several hundred units. At this particular complex, the HOA board made the decision on what company would be selected to do the work. I knew several members and they knew of my work, so I was called in to assist with the adjustment from the insurance company and make sure that they were taken care of under the assumption that I would get the contract for this deal. I met the adjuster on site who knew me and my company very well as we had been working the same market for nearly a decade at this point. He and I tag-teamed the adjustment to speed it along, and he also used my knowledge to help him understand what all needed to be covered. He primarily did flood damage claims, so he wasn't the most knowledgeable about roofing. Thus, he deferred to me for my expertise quite often when it came to these claims, especially pricing. This comes into play later. We finish the adjustment after two full days on site, and the adjuster heads off to go to work on the estimate, which he will have in about a week. At this time, Mr. D from the previously mentioned company finds out about this property and tries to finagle his way into getting the contract. Turns out, he knew the president of the HOA through some mutual friends. Mr. D bribed the president with a cruise to the Caribbean and a free new roof on his son's home to try and get the deal. Now, the entire board, aside from the president, was backing me at this point and he wanted me to do the work, but the dude just wasn't having it. I was forwarded an internal email chain from one of the friendly board members where Mr. President flat out replied, I don't give a crap, I will not let OP do our roofs. At this point, the other board members could easily just outvote him and give the job to me, and he knows this and tells Mr. D. So what does Mr. D do in all of his infinite wisdom? Well, Turbo Nuts decided to buy all the material needed for the project has it delivered, and has a crew start tearing off our roof without a signed contract. He did this knowing it would force the board's hand and they'd have to use him, solidifying him as the contractor. Okay, so I lost the deal, but where does my revenge and deliciously evil compliance come in, you ask? Well, remember when I said we were all waiting for the adjuster to write the estimate? We were about to get it. Now, anyone who has ever dealt with an insurance claim knows the insurance company always underpays the first time around. It's just how it is. You then deny acceptance of their price, send in your estimate, and negotiate. That is, unless you agree to their estimate up front. So, the day before Mr. D pulls his stunt, I get an email from the adjuster who is completely unaware of what is transpiring with his first draft of the estimate. As per usual, he sends it asking me to review it and to see if the pricing is right. Oh boy, was it not! This project should have cost anywhere between $500,000 to $600,000, and his estimate was for two hundred and forty dollars Fun fact, if a capable contractor and the customer agree to an insurance estimate, it makes it nearly impossible to ask for more money down the road since the customer and person able to do the work agreed to the original price. I 
think you already know where this is going. I replied back, yeah, looks good. Cut that check and send it to the HOA. So I went to the HOA the following day and I gave them the insurance estimate. I told them they just had to call the adjuster and confirm that they also approved it. And they did exactly that. I wished him the best of luck and to give this to Mr. D as he will need to get that contract finally signed for that price. I didn't put up a fight. I didn't argue or try to get the deal back. I simply went in knowing that I was no longer getting the deal and would have to accept that. Poof. I disappeared into the wind to let my plan play itself out. I found out a few months later from my friends on that board that Mr. D went absolutely ape crap when they gave him the agreed upon price. He tried calling the adjuster and getting a new price set, but the adjuster just replied that if he couldn't do it for that price, I was more than able to. He knew that he was screwed because he'd already committed himself to re-roofing that entire complex no matter what. He lost about $100,000 on that project based on my calculations. On top of that, he tried to cut every corner imaginable to get his cost down and ended up doing an absolutely terrible job. So terrible that the HOA is now suing him for not standing behind his work as numerous leaks have sprung up and some of the work is so shoddy it can be seen from the street and he is refusing to pay for it or come back and correct anything. He would have been better off to just do the project properly, eat the loss, which his company was large enough that he could eat it and not go under, and walk away, tail between his legs. He is not smart enough to come to this conclusion, as I found out. You try to be stingy and to bite my hand that fed you, then you come back for seconds, I'll bury you. Occasionally, I do feel bad knowing that his company couldn't even get a contract for a chicken coop at this point. But then I remember that he purposefully went out of his way to try and screw me and try to destroy any and all mutual respect that we had for one another. He made his bed, now he gets to lie in it. Update. Mr. President ended up not getting his promised Caribbean vacation or free roof, FYI. Mr. D reneged on that pretty fast. I also later found out that one of the workers slipped and fell into the attic and went through the ceiling of Mr. President's unit. He was fine, by the way. Think Tom Hanks in the money pit when he falls through the floor. I got a good chuckle out of that one. Did you ever get your 40,000? Oh heck no, and I never will more than likely, but I've made it back in other ways since this. Because since he has destroyed his reputation, myself and company number three are doing all the large projects in the area. All this work split two ways is better than three ways. Myself and Company 3 definitely got overloaded for a bit there, but we both managed and actually both grew in size and profits at an outrageous scale afterwards. So yeah, it all worked out. And we're on great terms because now we're the only two left who get these big jobs. The large loss world, property management, HOAs, and private owners is a small one, so word traveled fast. Now they did ask me to fix the mistakes that Mr. D made. I steered them towards a crew that could do it far cheaper than I could, being the middleman and all, and how to get those costs reimbursed by Mr. D. The repairs were made and the costs were reimbursed. HOA Assistance and Advice, posted by Joe Sal 35 I need some assistance and advice with my HOA. My wife and I live in a condo and townhome community in New Jersey. In late June of this year, I decided to replace my kitchen faucet as a phase of one of several home improvement projects. After watching several kitchen faucet replacement videos, I decided to call a plumber. When the plumbers arrived, they realized that the shutoff valve into the unit was broken. They stated that they're able to fix it, but first we would need permission from the HOA and their maintenance would have to shut off the valve into the entire building, thus turning off everyone else's water. Basically, I'm responsible for everything inside the unit and the HOA is responsible for the outside. So I conveyed this to the HOA and they decided to send out the maintenance man to look for our unit's shutoff valve as they did not believe that the plumbers knew where it was. After 20 minutes, the maintenance man agreed that the shutoff valve that the plumbers identified is, in fact, the shutoff valve. We then agreed with the HOA management that we would shut off the water into the building for the plumbers to do the work. I arranged for a time for the plumbers to come back at 9 a.m. the next day with the HOA's permission. The HOA stated that the maintenance man would be there to help. When the next day rolled around, 
the maintenance man came in at 7.30 a.m., tried to shut off the unit's shutoff valve, and left for a doctor's appointment after saying the plumber can work with a small amount of water trickle coming through the kitchen faucet. Needless to say, the plumbers disagreed. Maintenance workers from other units had to come and help the plumbers, but they realized that the shutoff valve into the building was also broken. The plumbers had to leave after two hours, to which I had to pay their appearance rate. After more back and forth with the HOA, they decided that a special plumber needed to fix the building's shutoff valve. It is now late July, and the HOA stated that there is no diagram of the development's pipe layout and that they do not know where the building's shutoff valve is. The excuse that they gave me is that there were several different developers who built the different buildings, and they lost the diagrams along the way. I can't move on with my home improvement projects until this is fixed, and I'm also concerned that if a water emergency were to happen in either my unit or my neighbors, we'd be in big trouble. Also, I don't think it's acceptable for them to not know where the unit's pipes are. The master deed states that they are to maintain the water system. Although they're attempting to fix it now, it does not seem that they've done so previously, and their ineptitude is costing us money. Does anyone have any advice? Is a lawsuit possible? This commenter says that he's kind of screwed, needs to keep pushing the HOA and get a lawyer, and then talks about getting a good plumber if the HOA can't do it. Good carcinogens and bad carcinogens, posted by Disneyopolis. HOA documents were hastily drafted by an attorney with an AOL email address while the billing was hastily converted from apartments to condos during the 2006 and 7 housing bubble, so you know the documents are bulletproof. We have six owner occupants and six rental units, with four of the landlords living outside of the city and two of the landlords living outside of the state. Our treasurer contracts cleaning and gardening to herself and reimburses herself for her cleaning services by transferring money from the HOA account to her personal account, and nobody says or does anything about it. No tax returns, no 1099s, nothing. Conflict of interest at best, embezzlement at worst. She interprets the documents however it's convenient for her, and you can quote her directly back to herself and she will backpedal. Enough backstory. Our board is willing to spend two grand on an amendment to ban cannabis and tobacco smoking before legalization takes effect on August 1st, and has been using some pretty shady techniques for the amendment and the vote, but they are not willing to spend 1800 bucks to mitigate radon on the garden level, which is the equivalent of 12 cigarettes a day. The building has always been non-smoking from the very beginning, even though it's never been in the documents. Are there good carcinogens and bad carcinogens? One of the absentee landlords on the board responded to the above question with, As an HOA, I think that everyone should assume positive intent by other owners. We are all volunteers and we all have a lot going on in our lives. If you want your dues to go up substantially, we can hire someone to manage the HOA. Do you really think a company will care about what is happening in a small 12 unit building? Gaslighting, yay! Do people with positive intent usually have to ask you to assume positive intent? Certainly, being a volunteer with a very busy life excuses lack of response to building maintenance, lawn care, snow removal, and so on. I'm sure the LLC that our secretary owns for her rental unit is very concerned about what is happening in a small 12-unit building. Perhaps she would feel more comfortable if she kept to her suburban McMansion 30 miles away and left the management of the building to us poors. What is the appropriate level of shade and trolling for my response? I wasn't even going to attend the meeting so they wouldn't have a quorum, until they sent a reminder that if you didn't have a proxy, the board would be your proxy. I also got them to postpone the vote until after August 1st, because one of my garden level peers, a medical MJ patient, is pending sale. The least they can do is allow the new owner to have a voice, right? I am thinking about voting present so that they meet their quorum, but one less vote towards a majority. The HOA illegally finds me, but I'm not even part of the HOA. Click the video on your screen, you don't want to miss this crazy fallout, and I will see you there.